Hello, and in this video, we are going to be learning how to use PyVPN. Um, so it's going, PyVPN helps you set up, install, and manage um, an open VPN server. So PyVPN was originally made for the wonderful Raspberry Pi, but you don't, but you can use it on pretty much any computer running Ubuntu or Debian. Um, it was designed to kind of simplify the installation and setup of open VPN. If you have um, tried to do that yourself from scratch it can be um, surprisingly complicated and hopefully in this little video tutorial you'll be surprised about how easy PyVPN is to install. So the requirements are you're going to need a computer running Ubuntu or Debian and of course sudo or root access to that server. Also if you're going to be running the server behind a home router you're going to need to enable port forwarding and so what we want to do is forward all UDP traffic to port from heading all UDP traffic traffic for port 1194 to your server's local IP address. Um, so the installation is very easy. You just uh, grab this command here and throw it into the terminal. So that's going to be downloading a script and executing it. Sounds a little bit scary, but these guys are trustworthy. So it's going to download the script. It's going to start installing stuff. Um, so we have our automated automated installer screen here. Let's see, so static IP address is needed. So your clients are going to be connecting to this server. So it needs to have a static IP address. If that IP address changes a whole bunch, your clients won't be able to connect to it. Hopefully that makes sense. So a good example would be, um, you know, if you're running this in, the, I'm running this in uh, a Linode cloud um, server. So that IP address is gonna stay the same. But if I was doing this on my home machine, my IP address might change. You might notice that your IP address for your home internet sometimes changes. Um, and that's gonna cause some problems. And that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but you can you can fix it. There are definitely ways to fix in that. So we're just gonna go past that screen. Um, and I'm not installing this on a Raspberry Pi, so it's not Raspberryan. So it's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so uh, we need to choose a local user that will hold these uh, OVPN configuration files. Now these are the files you're going to be giving to your clients. So that's going to be easy. So I already have in the system a user named Jason because that's my name. And we're of course going to select that user. Okay, so unattended upgrades. Um, these are always pretty good to do, especially with a server that is running like a VPN, right? You want to have all the latest security fixes. So say yes there. And it's gonna do some more installing magic. This is where we watch the uh, command line magic. Okay, so um, the protocol. So you can do TCP or UDP. And as the instructions say, please only choose TCP if you know why you need TCP. Um, I have not encountered a need for this. So of course I'm gonna go with the recommendation and just say, I will use uh, UDP. Um, and we can modify the port, but I'm gonna keep the port the standard port. I don't need to do anything fancy here. Um, and these are correct. Okay, and now it's gonna ask you about the um, encryption strength. You've got three different choices here. The automatic, the default selection is the one that I would go with because it's kind of like the uh, Goldilocks. Um, the 1024 is just too weak and then the uh, 4096 is just gonna be way too slow. So I'm gonna choose the, the one right in the middle. All right, more installations. And now it's going to have to generate that Diffie-Hellman key. It's going to take a little while. Oh, well, was that pretty fast? Did I actually do it? Okay. Um, and then version 2.4 improvements. Say yes to this. This is this is good. <laughs> okay, so this is my public IP address for this server. Um, and that's one we want to use. We don't want to use a DNS entry. So as I said, if you had a dynamically allocated IP address that changed a lot, you would have to use the DNS entry, but we're not going to do that. And now we need to select what our DNS provider for our clients will be. I generally always just use Google. I don't know what you use, but that's what I use. All right, so um, now we can actually start running commands. But first, we need to reboot. So we're just gonna say yes. And system will now do a reboot. It should kick me out of the server. So we're gonna come back to this video as soon as that server reboots. 
Okay, so the server has rebooted, and the command we're going to be using to interact with Pi VPN is Pi VPN. So let's run that help command just to see what it can do. Okay, so we've got uh, the commands that allow us to add profiles, revoke profiles. We can list how many, um, or maybe not how many, but we can list the clients that are connected to the server. We can do all kinds of cool things. The one thing with adding new clients to this server is there's going to be two ways of doing it. One is just with add, and that's just going to ask you for a password. And so every time that client connects to the server, it's going to ask for a password, or we can give the no pass command, and then it will just allow you to automatically connect to the server. So I'm gonna make um, a profile for my phone, and I'm, I don't want a password for that one, so let's do that. Uh, let's see, pi v p n add the no pass. Okay, so the name is going to be, I'm just going to call it, oops, I'm going to call it phone. All right, so it has just generated, and you can see, remember when it asked for a user, um, that user we said was going to be Jason, and that inside of Jason's home directory here, boom, that's where all these um, OVPN files are going to be, and those are the files you give to your clients, and those clients then use software, that, 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 that OP, <laughs> Those clients use that OVPNS file to connect to the server. Sorry, those acronyms were, were killing me there. Okay, so, um, and if we want to revoke, um, we just use, oops, the command up here, revoke by the name. Um, so, yeah, that's actually pretty much all you need to do. So, um, do, do, do. So connecting client. So now you've um, given yourself, actually, let's go back. Let's go back. So I want to show, let's go, I want to show you those. So we're going to change directory. We're going to go into that directory. We're going to list that out so you can see. So it did create an OVPN file. We can even open up that. So nano phone. Don't worry. Um, this is just a test server. I'm not going to give you any secrets. So you can see it gives you all kinds of information about, um, the server and how to connect to it. It even tells you the certificates. See, oh, these are the secret certificates. But like I said, I'm going to be killing this server. So even you people, your keen eyes, keen eyes um, won't help you. So it's got all the information you can see about connecting to that server. It's pretty cool. So if you wanted, so if I want to get that connect to the server with my phone. I need to transfer this file to my phone somehow. So that's going to be up to you how you do that. But um, yes. So um, connect clients. So you have yourself this um, file and for your device. You're going to need to install some software for that device. Um, and there's clients available for Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, for everything. Um, I'm going to have some links in the show notes that's going to show you where to go for that software. But there's pretty much the standard ones, like the people behind um, OpenVPN provide a whole bunch of clients, and those are the ones I, I recommend using. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching that video. I hope it was informative for you. Um, and if you liked it, hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos about programming and open source software, um, hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you for watching.